Hello, Dr. Denise Webb here, clinical psychologist. Welcome to my video series on emotional neglect. Today, I'm gonna to talk about the four subtle things that you may have missed growing up in an emotionally neglectful family. And believe me, they are very important things. In a minute, I'm gonna tell you how you can give these things to yourself now. But first, I wanna talk for just a minute about what makes childhood emotional neglect so subtle and so difficult to remember. For, for people who even who grew up with a lot of it, it can be really difficult to remember that you grew up this way. And the reason is because it happens in the background. It happens by what your parents fail to do for you rather than what your parents do to you. Your parents could treat you well and be trying their very best and love you and still fail to respond to your emotional needs enough. And that is the definition of childhood emotional neglect. And it is the reason because it dwells in what doesn't happen for you versus dwelling in what does happen to you. We remember things that happen to us. We tend not to remember things that don't happen for us. So there are some major things that fail to happen for you as you are growing up in an emotionally neglectful family. And the first one is emotionally neglected children are not asked very many questions. For example, questions like, how are you feeling right now? What are you feeling right now? You look sad, why are you sad? You look hurt. Did what I just said hurt your feelings? You seem angry. Are you angry? So these are questions that are actually directly about emotions, but questions of all kinds. If a child is not asked enough questions about even, aside from their emotions, what they think, what they want, what they need, questions that direct their attention inward and also give them the message that their feelings, their thoughts, their needs matter. Someone, an adult in their life, is interested in what they want, what they feel, what they need. And this is not a material thing. I know lots of families who um, don't have much in the way of material things to give their kids but who give them this rich, rich, important resource that prepares them for life. And it is an important key to raising a child that feels connected with their inner self. So when you don't get asked enough questions, it's really hard to know as an adult what you want, feel, and need. You've learned to focus outward as opposed to inward and you haven't been given those tools that help you identify what you really, who you are inside yourself. The second thing that emotionally neglected kids miss out on is the use of emotion words in their childhood home. We all learn language starting at about age one or even before just by hearing people around us talk and by people speaking to us and we learn words and our vocabulary just grows and grows as we grow up because we're learning, taking in all these words. If your family is emotionally neglectful, they're probably not using very many emotion words, if any, but a lot of emotionally neglectful families will use one or two emotion words and just apply them to all emotions. Like it might be stressed or it might be mad, um, but, if there's, very, if there's very little subtle variations of emotion words, um, like, for example, using words like sparkling or liberated or defensive or despairing or depleted, as opposed to just saying, I'm tired or I'm stressed or I'm mad. Um, emotion words are very important for children to learn so that they will be able to later on, um, all through their entire lives, be able to put words to what they are feeling. And so when your 
emotion vocabulary is very limited. It severely limits your ability to emotionally communicate with other people and even with yourself as you grow into adulthood and beyond. The third thing missing in an emotionally neglectful family is emotional expression, which is a little bit different than emotion words. Emotional expression is the freedom and the comfort of talking about things that actually involve feelings. So it could be things like um, painful or uncomfortable, conflictual sorts of, um, sorts of topics. So for example, if there's a, a death in the family, I know emotionally neglectful families who have skirted talking about a very, very important loss. And the kids just think, okay, we're not supposed to talk about this. Um, and this is what they learn. And it, this is a very harmful message because talking about things is the main way we connect with people. And also the main way we work through our emotions is by talking about them. So families that avoid talking about major events that are emotional, families that avoid talking about problems, especially if they are serious problems. In a lot of families, the more serious the issue, the less likely they are to talk about it. What does this teach you as a child? Don't talk about emotional things. Don't talk about conflict. And that leaves you feeling very alone and isolated inside as you grow into adulthood and you miss learning all those skills about how to talk about those things, which is another thing. The next thing that you don't get growing up in an emotionally neglectful family is yourself. The ability to see yourself reflected in your parents' eyes. This is how children learn about themselves. What's their true nature? Uh, you know, how do I know if I'm a child, anything about myself? You look at your parents, you see yourself in their eyes, they give you feedback. You know, you're really good at math. We need to work on your spelling would be a really basic one. But things like, you know, you're so kind hearted, but boy, you have a quick temper. Do you remember your parents saying anything like that to you? Or, um, you know, you, you really are loyal to your friends. I see that in you and it's a wonderful quality. Like those kinds of things, both strengths and weaknesses, your character, your personality, all of those things really need to be reflected back to a child so that they get a sense of who they truly are. And if you didn't receive that, you may have trouble figuring out who you are as an adult. And now I wanna talk about how you can give these things to yourself now. You absolutely can. It is very possible, I've seen many people do it. And one of the main ways to work on this is to ask yourself what you want on a daily basis. Really just tune into yourself and ask yourself, what do I want? Or what do I need? Or what do I feel? Even what do I think? Um, really this requires you to tune into yourself and touch base with yourself and very importantly observe yourself on an emotional level and when you do this you get a sense of who you are and it's sort of a data collection process so you're just collecting information and putting it all together and somehow inside when you pay more attention to all of these questions you start to feel seeable and knowable and like a real person so you feel more valid in the world and because you know yourself better you can make better choices for yourself so i invite you to please leave um, your comments below this video about whether you feel like childhood emotional neglect um, happened to you and what which of these items you feel like you may have missed out on in your childhood and how it's affecting you now I would like to hear any of that from you and if you got a lot out of this video um, please press the subscribe button and bell so that you'll be notified when my next videos start coming out um, about childhood emotional neglect and how it affects us as adults 
And in my next video, I'm going to show you how emotional neglect can make it quite difficult to recognize your emotions and even know when you're having a feeling. This is a prime emotion skill and we're going to talk about it in the next video. So I'll look forward to seeing you then. Bye-bye.